Well, welcome back, y'all. Let's move on to describe radiation damage mechanisms in biological tissue for charged particles, electromagnetic radiation, and neutrons. Do you remember the three types of radiation capable of ionizing atoms? Atoms in human tissue and atoms in materials, structural materials? Those radiations were charged particles, protons, electrons, fission products, and alpha particles. Electromagnetic radiation, gamma rays and x-rays, and neutrons. We need to remember that ionization vents are the root cause behind all observable effects of radiation. And ionization reactions damage materials by breaking chemical bonds and disrupting normal chemical processes. Furthermore, the rate of ionization damage depends upon the type of radiation, the energy of the radiation, and the constituent atoms in the target material. We also need to remember that ionizing radiation is radiation that contains enough energy to remove one or more electrons from an atom or molecule. We need to remember that all charged particles are ionizing, while only photons with an energy greater than the ionization energy of a given atom or molecule are considered ionizing. Gamma rays and X-rays are considered to be ionizing. The illustration should help you recall the interactions of photons, charged particles, and neutrons. Are neutrons ionizing radiation? Not really. But neutrons have reaction that create ionizing radiation, so we can conclude that a batch of neutrons will cause ionizations. Scattering collisions of neutrons with nuclei or fission events can produce ionizing radiation. I believe you've seen this slide before, but it's good to repeat some things to implant them in your mind. That's why you sometimes see TV commercials three times during one newscast. In advertising, the effective frequency is the number of times a person must be exposed to a message before the message is remembered. The LET is the linear energy transfer or the rate at which energy is lost by a charged ionizing particle traveling through matter. The LET depends upon the nature of the radiation as well as on the material traversed. A high LET for a material will attenuate a beam of radiation more quickly and prevent deep penetration. Here's an illustration to show ionization density. Consider that the circle represents the size of an average human cell. Of course, we've enlarged the average human cell, so you can see what we're talking about. The horizontal lines for the different types of radiation represent the track of the radiation and the frequency with which they leave ionizations, or ion clusters, as labeled here. Note that the rate at which gamma rays leave ion clusters is not that great. Note also that an alpha particle, that relatively big cluster of two neutrons and two protons, has a very dense track of ion clusters as it passes through a biological target. As a result of this guy giving up lots of energy every little increment of travel, it gives up all its energy in a relatively small range of travel. Okay, I've introduced the subject of human cells. I'm going to do a brief diversion to review what I will call Biology 101 and talk about human cells. We humans are in the animal class of living organisms. We, as animals, are an organized collection of organs held together by connective tissue whose functions are coordinated by a nervous system. Note that cells are the basic building blocks of life. Cells are grouped together by specialization into tissues. Tissues work together to form organs which perform specific functions. Adult humans have approximately 7 times 10 to the 13th total cells of 210 different types. That's 70,000 billion cells, 70 followed by 12 zeros. 
These 70,000 billion cells perform certain basic tasks, metabolism, protein synthesis, and reproduction. These cells have subunits called organelles, responsible for, for, for performing tasks. In metabolism, cells break down complex nutrient molecules to release energy that's used to enable biochemical reactions within the cell. In protein synthesis, cells build proteins required to perform the specialized tasks of the cell. In reproduction, Cells reproduce by division, referred to as mitosis, in eukaryotic cells. Every cell contains specialized organelles, which are responsible for performing these tasks. Now, I had never heard of organelles before, but I was fascinated by this illustration of a cell from Wikipedia. Hence, I will not explain all the organelles, but I do want you to note that every cell is 70 to 90 percent water and we will develop an understanding of what radiation does to water. Two slides ago I introduced the three major functions of cells metabolism, protein synthesis, and reproduction. The takeaway here is that ionizing radiation can disrupt these major functions. Because of ionization Cells may not produce the energy that it needs, and the cell dies. Cells may not create protein needed for cell survival, or cells cannot create protein required for its specialized task. The cell is alive but useless. Cells may not reproduce, or may reproduce incorrectly. The cell remains alive and functioning, but it's sterile. Many ionizations within a cell can do enough damage to disrupt metabolism or protein synthesis and kill the cell. But one gamma ray causing ionization in one cell doesn't necessarily kill the cell. For radiation damage, it requires a lot of energy to be deposited within the cell. But here's how it can happen. A high LET particle, like an alpha particle, with a mass of four atomic mass units and a charge of plus two can ionize biological cells. And high energy gamma rays can produce free radicals that cause radiolysis of water. Let's look at the radiolysis of water. In this illustration, you see a gamma ray striking the bond of a water molecule. Two hydrogens linked to one oxygen. Good old H2O. The gamma ray can break the chemical bond attaching one of the hydrogen atoms to the oxygen atom. Then we no longer have a water molecule. We have a free hydrogen atom with a charge of plus one and an oxygen atom attached to only one hydrogen atom called a hydroxyl free radical. Or if it has a charge of minus one, it's called a hydroxide anion. Hydroxyl radicals can cause damage to cells. Please recall that cells are 70 to 90 percent water. It's generally held that cell disruptions cause cancer. But let's keep some perspective here. Cells have repair mechanisms and cell disruptions occur from many causes. Cell disruptions can be induced by many environmental factors such as ultraviolet light, sunburn, stress, chemicals, tobacco products, and viruses. Cell death typically requires hundreds of ionizations or, or oxidations within a single cell. Cells have a tremendous ability to repair damage. As a result, not all radiation effects are fatal to the cell. In many instances, the cells are able to completely repair any damage and function normally. If, of course, the damage is severe enough, the affected cell dies. Cell death is an area in which scientists have developed better understanding in recent years. Far from being strictly harmful, scientists have found that controlled cell death is critical to life as we know it. Cell alterations caused by radiation may be the same as those changes that occur naturally in the cell and may have no negative effect. 
Cells may be damaged by radiation, then repair the damage and operate normally. Cells can repair the damage if the damage is limited. What about the effect of radiation on cells, DNA, and chromosomes? Here I'm going to make some remarks to try to insert a little realism into the subject of radiation and the human body. And I borrow liberally here from Alan Walter's book, Radiation and Modern Life, and Mark Hart's article in the journal Radiation Protection Management. Links to these sources are on the week four overview. As I said before, cells have redundant features and repair mechanisms to handle cell disruptions. Otherwise, we'd never survive. Many thousands of chromosome aberrations, changes, occur constantly in our bodies. Fortunately, we have effective mechanisms to repair these changes. Cell death typically requires hundreds of ionizations or oxidations within a single cell. There are repair mechanisms on the cellular and DNA level to repair damage from ionizing radiation. If the repair is not effective, the body replaces the cell. According to Lucky in his book, Radiation Hormesis, I understand that in the human body, 500,000 radioactive disintegrations occur every minute. According to Lucky, the human body gives off over 6,000 gamma rays every minute that are more energetic than the energetic gamma rays given off by cobalt-60. What if your body were not able to accommodate half a million disintegrations each minute? If so, you'd not be alive and listening to me. Cell damage due to low levels of radiation is repaired on a regular basis by the human body. If the cell is not properly repaired, it's replaced. According to Abelson, every hour on average, every cell in the human body undergoes approximately 8,000 DNA modifying events independent of radiation. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Large doses of radiation can be fatal, but small doses of radiation are not necessarily fatal and are considered by some to even be beneficial. You've probably all seen the double helix shape of the DNA sequence. I don't profess to understand all there is to understand about DNA other than the fact that I got one set of chromosomes for my dad and one for my mom, and the DNA can be used to solve crimes and trace your ancestry. I can't argue that zero damage is done to the human body when it's struck by an alpha, beta, or gamma. Indeed, there's a finite probability that a chromosome could be damaged and some specific type of aberration could occur. However, if we're worried about the damage that may be inflicted on a vital cell, tissue, or chromosome, we need to recognize that according to Polykov, the human body has about a hundred trillion cells. Each one of these cells routinely undergoes about 25,000 DNA alterations each day from the action of free radicals created in the normal process of combining oxygen and food to power the body. This amounts to around 10 million alterations per cell per year. Why don't we all die an early death from such damage? It's because all living cells, including the cells in our own body, have, as I said before, exceptionally effective repair mechanisms. I want you to understand that there is a difference in radiation dose effects depending upon whether you get the dose delivered over an extended period of time or if you get the dose as a massive dose over a short period of time. We call the dose delivered over an extended period of time a chronic dose, while a dose delivered over a short period of time is an acute dose. Now based on what I've said in the previous slides, I hope you can understand that an acute dose is generally more damaging than a chronic dose of the same size because the body's repair mechanisms have less opportunity to act. Let's look at the short-term effects of large amounts of radiation. 
the immediate effects hours to days of short-term acute radiation doses start with skin reddening, immune suppression, and increase up to loss of hair and central nervous system damage as the dose increases. <coughs> Excuse me. Long-term effects on the order of months to years include cancer, cataracts, genetic defects, and lifespan shortening. There is no disagreement among scientists as to the effects of high doses. High doses can be fatal. On the other hand, there is a lack of consensus on the effects of low doses. And that's what I want to explain to you. We'll come back next time to look at what we know about the effects of high acute doses and low chronic doses. Thanks for your attention. See you tomorrow.